Hey folks, I am going to demo this. <clears throat> this is the Spilpa Custom Guitars Blackhawk model. It's a, I'm it, uh, I think I called it a Sunburst Cognac. No, it's a Sunburst. <laughs> it's actually a violin. Classic violin sunburst that I um, that I patterned it after. It's um, it's mahogany back. You can hear it's pretty solid. Um, maple top, roasted maple neck, uh, spurzel. This one's got spurzel tuners and a, and the uh, graph tech nut. A Wilkinson tremolo bridge and a pair of Seymour Duncans in here. I'll give you a little bit of a taste. So I'm going to start on the um, on the humbucker pickup, uh, clean. And I'll go through. I'll just play this a similar riff, so you get an idea of what it sounds on each of the different settings. And then I'll go through with some distortion on my RK5 on my Tech 21 RK5. tuned in there. I have not tuned this in a very long time. <laughs> I'm going to check to see if indeed is in tune. It's just a little bit flat. But it's consistently flat across the board because nothing sounded out of tune. So everything's, so I would consider that more like a, a shift in the weather, but. Okay, so I'm gonna go now. So you can hear, that's a, that's a pretty nice sounding instrument. <clears throat> I'll go into the uh, distortion now.
Which is pretty freaking spectacular. Um, anyway, let's go through it. Uh, this actually, I'm putting this video together because I've I've got an ad up on Reverb, and on Reverb there's uh, uh, there's an offer. I've got I've got I built this for myself. As you can tell from the from the dust that accumulated from my sweat, um, but I built this for myself. Uh, designed and built it for myself. The um, I wanted something that was going to be lighter weight than a Les Paul, but still give me all the tones. Um, plus uh, a lot of the um, versatility of a Strat. Um, something that's going to be a little bit smaller than a, a PRS in terms of body size. And then of course incorporate this um, roasted maple neck. Um, roasted maple, I remember when uh, Gibson came out with their um, like a tribute series of Les Pauls uh, back in the like about 10 years ago. I was like everybody was sneering at the idea of a roasted maple fretboard. They, they, they stained it to try and make it look like rosewood because rosewood is now an illegal, um, it's illegal to import it or you have to have a special import license because of the scarcity of it. So Gibson tried to make fretboards out of roasted maple. Well, turns out that roasted maple is like spectacular. It's, it's incredibly stable. Um, they call it, um, it's like roasted or torrified. And that it's it's baked until it's um, until all the moisture's out and it's actually taken the sugars and solidified them inside the wood. So it makes this profoundly hard, and it does not need a finish. As a result, the um, the other best thing about it is once you get this thing set up, once you get a maple neck set up, a roasted maple neck set up, it doesn't drift. It stays set up the way that you you've done it right so the for the most part you know you can go to whatever um to whatever climate you want to go and the adjustments necessary would be so minimal as to make it you know almost um almost negligible almost zero so anyways as i said i built this for myself i ordered um, I, I sent, a, I did my designs, I put together some prototypes. One of the prototypes that I put together, my friend Andy Edwards in the UK has, and I'm, um, and uh, that one was made with a, with a typical maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. Um, it, uh, a friend of mine uh, from uh, Norway took it over from here and, and then on his visit to the UK handed it over um, Andy needs to go get it set up because it did drift a, par a, a bit, but um, uh, and I've been trying to encourage him to, to join me and I can show him how to set this up uh, to get it set up and, and store it according to his spec. But the, this one, I've, uh, I've, I actually took it to Rosfest in April and played it there. So anybody who, who was at Rosfest uh, knows that I was playing on the, I was the one of the minstrel on the patios, uh, the beer garden, and um, when I played it, and it sounded fantastic there. It did not need to be. It did not go out of tune between my air conditioned house and and a very uh, uh, muggy Sarasota, muggy and warm Sarasota air, um, and um, it also um, it also is just a, a 
quite a pretty guitar, all right? So, really nice. I've, I've got premium uh, CTS pots. I've got a premium five-way switch. I've got these orange drop capacitors. As you heard when I was messing around during playing, I, I turned it down to get that, the woman tone, the Eric Clapton woman tone. Um, it is just a, a profoundly nice instrument to play. Um, and not to toot my own horn, but this is probably, um, well, it's a hell of a lot more pleasant to play than a Les Paul, one of the, the mid-late 70s Les Pauls that were, you know, 12 pounds. Um, it's also um, a little easier to play because this is a 12-inch radius on fretboard. It's a lot easier to play than the seven and a quarter and, and nine and a half inch radius strats. Um, I don't, uh, you don't fret out when you, uh, when you bend the string. When you bend it way up. And I don't, I'm typically not like a uh, across the fretboard strength bender, but I can go like even going halfway up or through two thirds of the way up. It's not fretting out, which is something that happens on Stratocasters. So uh, what fretting out means that, of course, for anybody who doesn't know, fretting out means that your, your string is actually starting to rub against the frets that are immediately ahead of it between the, the finger and the, and the bridge. And that's typical what happens with, with um, tighter radius instruments. And so it's got a 12-inch radius. It's actually one of the, the things I stole from the PRS design. It's got slightly flatter um, uh, fingerboard than, than a lot of um, instruments out there. In fact, I think Gibson's now gone to a 12 inch. PRS were 12 inch. Um, um, fenders are now nine and a half. You can order custom order next that will be um, bigger radius. And, um, and then <clears throat> it's got medium jumbo frets, just like a PRS or Gibson. It's got, um, it's got this Wilkinson tremolo. And the Wilkinson tremolo, I don't know what dropped. Maybe just another pick. Um, so, let's see, everything's there, yeah. <laughs> it's not from here. Um, it's, got, um, it's got a Wilkinson tremolo two point. And, um, and the good thing, the really good thing about this is that um, and the reason I chose this particular tremolo design, um, it's got uh, Allen screws, uh, set screws to be able to uh, adjust your intonation. It's got Allen screws to set your individual saddle heights. And it has clamps. So once you get your intonation set up, you clamp it down and it doesn't move. So, and also they're polished saddles you don't have the problem of any binding. A lot of the, um, a lot of the Strat, uh, typical Strat style tremolo systems uh, with the bent metal or the, um, or the heavier gauge, uh, older saddles from the 90s, they still bound up. <clears throat> so when you did those big ass dive bombs, it would, um, it would get stuck and you'd be out of tune. And then you have to do wanky things like pull on the strings to get it to get it um, back into tune. The other portion of this is, huh, oh, that's what that's what fell off my string lock. Um, let's see, that's not it. Okay. Oh no, it is it. Um, so, anyways, let's go back to the to this. My, uh, the cap on the string lock fell uh, unscrewed. I don't know why. That's so unusual. It didn't just unscrew, it's, it popped right off. Oh, wow. Dude, that sucks. Okay. Um, okay, so that, um, so that handles the saddles. It's got, of course, your typical uh, claw and three springs on the back. I set it up in this sort of triangular fan pattern because the um, 
the center spring doesn't actually start to really engage any force until you get past a certain point and you start feeling the third spring kick in. It's, it's, it's not as tight as the other ones. So it gives you a little bit more um, dynamic feel. And then, um, and then the, um, the last thing, as I'm going through with regards to string tensioning, the tusk nut, that's the secret to keeping uh, your guitar in tune. Uh, this is a, um, the Graf Tech, Tech tusk nut is a Teflon um, baked into the material carbon substrate. Makes it super slick. It's essentially just like um, the old trick back in the day and still you can do it on like for older guitars is you put some graphite powder into the nut slots and, and it, um, it makes this things, you know, go nice and smooth. The, um, whereas the, uh, if you don't do that, it's really very, uh, it does get bound up and you go out of tune. The, um, by putting this in and if you have, and with high quality tuners, you don't have that issue with, uh, with it binding up and going out of tune. Um, which means that you can do all these crazy ass dive bombs and things within reason and you're not going to, uh, you don't need to have that Floyd Rose. That's the other decision that was made is I didn't want to go to a Floyd Rose um, because that's a pain in the ass to change strings on. I have, a, I have another instrument that I built with a Floyd Rose. I have a, an older instrument that's uh, a slightly different design, um, but it was one of the, well, it's a, it's a Wolfgang from um, uh, USA Custom Guitars. It's just, it's a, it's a, the Van Halen Wolfgang, EVH um, Wolfgang design. So it's, it's kind of a hybrid Telestrat. And, and I put the Floyd Rose on it and it's fantastic. It's great. But well, going to go switch strings, it takes, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. This, I can get strings changed in about 10 minutes, right? Now, of course, I've got, like I said, premium hardware. These are Schallers. Schallers are freaking expensive. I just happen to have a set of them. Uh, but I ordered like two years ago and they're hanging around, so I put them on. Um, 18 to 1. All the the machines that I put on, all the tuning machines are 18 to ones, whether they're the hip shot, uh, locking, uh, nut tuner, locking, uh, tuners, or whether the Schallers or whether they're the, um, even the Wilkinson, uh, are, are really stable 18 to one, uh, tuners. So, um, and then of course, if you stick with the Wilkinson stuff, this is, uh, the basic instrument. I have another guitar, I have one of the slightly earlier ones than this that has got a sort of a SG finish, uh, like a like a, a red mahogany um, uh, lacquer uh, finish on it, and it's slightly different. And then I had a three position toggle put in. I'm not not there that fond of that design, but the um, um, but it's uh, it has all Wilkinson parts and. Um, and it sounds great. They're all, you know, it's like I've got Alvinico 5, Alvinico uh, 2, um, neck and, and bridge. And um, and then we've got um, uh, the same thing, all uh, CTS pots, orange drop capacitors. So as I was going to say, when I, when I sent away the design, like the, I first I sent away and I got two, two unfinished bodies and maple necks and so one of the the other one is a i tried using the um the, the chroma shifting paint on and my son is is taking it over and he's using it now extensively every day um he foregoes using his um his uh sterling uh john petrucci in favor of of uh, the one of the early prototypes and um, and then uh, I got the the mahogany uh, lacquered one, and then uh, ordered I ordered six more. <clears throat> now this is one of the six. It's fantastic. I have another five <clears throat> bodies and neck combinations, 
and they're available. Uh, and this is what I'm advertising on uh, on Reverb is the uh, is the opportunity to have your instrument custom built for you with the pickups and hardware that you specify. I can put a Floyd Rose on it. Um, it involves a little bit of routing, but I can do that. I have done it. And, um, but, um, you know, pickups, um, tuning machines, wiring, custom wiring, we can, we can match the five position super switch with push pull pots and get a whole bunch of really whack combinations going. Um, I can um, design a uh, pick guard and put in single, single hum, single, single, single. It's, it's all there, all available. Um, and, um, and of course, based on what, you, what it is that you require, uh, we will work out uh, price. But the base model, uh, the, the, the elementary model that I, that I talked about earlier with the still has the five position switch, still has the volume tone, CPS the volume tone and orange rock capacitors, the same Wilkinson whammy, um, a different uh, set of, uh, of uh, tuners, but, um, uh, but it will have the tusk nut. Um, everything here and the locking strap, the strap locks and everything is, is $999. It is a fantastic deal, in my opinion. Um, you're getting better hardware than any of the, the SEs, the PRS SEs that are coming in, especially like between the pickups and the tremolos and uh, tuners, you're not getting uh, something that's just sort of generic off the floor. Um, things from overseas, you're getting um, quality parts. And this is, I would guess this is around between five and six pounds. Um, and that's including all the all the hardware. Um, I made the same finish. It'll, every one of them is slightly different. The um, aesthetics are: you've got this this uh, arm cut, a uh, drop top that um, is more comfortable to play than than uh, like a typical telly that would or or that would have just a flat top. This is this is carved. This is you know everything is. There's been a lot of care taken and thought put into this. It has a rib cut. Uh, you know, admittedly not as deep as, as some, but you don't need it to be that deep. And then when I go to stand up, there's no neck dive. I gotta suck in my gut. Take a look at that, no neck dive. So it's as light as an SG with no neck dive, it's super stable, tuning wise. It's got a premium roasted maple neck with um, medium jumbo uh, frets. It's got, it's got everything that anybody from beginner all the way through to professional playing every night. And the, the, and the wonderful thing about this is it's not at a, a price level that would actually, you would be going Oh, it's precious. I don't want to take it out because I don't want to lose it or I don't want to have it drop on stage and have all sorts of damage done to it. This is, this is at the price point where you can play it every night and you would not be worried about it uh, at all. You, you know, between sets, you put it on the stand to come back, you know it's going to be in tune or as in tune as it was when you put it down. Um, so that's it. Uh, this is my, my pitch. I have five of these. You know, you've, you've heard how they sound, how it sounds. It's, um, of course I got it set up, the, the, the Tech 21 is set up right now that it, um, it's a little bit hot in the output. But um, as you hear, it's still ringing. So, um, and also like, harmonics about pretty much anywhere on the neck okay so gang 
Uh, if you have any questions, reach out. Really interested in, in hearing from you. Like I said, um, be one of the first to um, to order one of these things. These are these are nice. I I'm using it. I'm selling I'm selling off all my name brand instruments in favor of just sticking with these. So I mean, uh, and I'm really picky about what it is that I play. So, gang, thanks very much. Been a pleasure. Let me know what you think and um, have yourselves a great rest of your day.